Okay, now that we have worked out how to make our simple circuit that we need for our bottom with the offset counterweight attached and then back to the battery pack, we know how to put that together and how to attach the wires, making those hooks with the legs. Now we're going to look at how we make the very simple doodle bot. Now the doodle bot is the, is the simplest of the bots to make. Now to do this you can either use just a, a plastic cup that you have in the house, you could even get an old coffee cup or you could buy these cheaply. Uh, the one I've got is corrugated, um, but you might want to just get plain cardboard ones, it might make it easier for the children to decorate. And we're going to look at how we go about making this simple doodle bot. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to take off the lid for, the, for our coffee cup and we're going to attach uh, pens as the legs. So we've got our three pens, and we're going to do this to begin with, with keeping the lids on the feet of the pens, just to stop any mess and children getting pens on their hands. Now what we're going to do is we're going to attach with tape the pens around the cup so that the bot can stand up. What's an interesting thing that you could discuss with your children is what would happen if you changed the size of the legs, the length of the legs. So what would happen if you had one leg this leg and one leg this length? Would it tilt to the side? How would that change its movement? And that's just an interesting question to ask them and maybe even a wee investigation that you can do. Certainly that's one of the things we definitely do with the draw bot with the older children. So for now what we're going to do is we're going to put the legs on. Now a simple way of getting the legs the same length is by keeping the lids on. You can say to the children, you want to get the lid to the lip of the cup and hold it there. And then you can use your sellotape just to very quickly sellotape, oops, oh, stuck to my hand to sellotape that leg on. Okay, so we've got one leg on and we've got that to the length of the, the cup. You can see it's right up to the lip. So when I come to do my second leg, it's easy to get that leg the same length. Okay, so there's another benefit of having the lid still on the pane, not just stopping their hands and their, and their work from getting messy, but it's an easy way to make sure that all your parts are the same. And you can talk about that, about in science, about keeping things the same, and about fear test and all those different things. Okay, so we'll put our third leg on now. Get my next bit of sellotape. There we go. Now, I'm doing this quite quickly for the video using only one bit of sellotape, but you're probably going to need more than one bit of sellotape per leg. But just so that you can see the idea, that's what it looks like. And it allows the cup to stand up like this. Okay, I'm just going to quickly secure this a bit better and then we'll look at adding the components. Okay, I have I used a bit more sellotape now, you can see, to make sure my legs are nice and secure so they're not going to fall off. And, and that's one of the things that the children are going to have to make sure they're doing is they're attaching their legs nice and secure. It's also worth saying, thinking about the design process, that if you're going to be decorating your cup, look how much sellotape is on this now. If the children are going to be drawing on this or sticking on this, they maybe want to do that first or second. What's going to make it stick best or draw best? Depending on the kind of cup you're doing, if they're drawing on the cup, if they're sticking onto the cup, maybe it doesn't matter. But it's just worth thinking these steps through. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to attach the components, the simple circuit to the um, to our doodle bot. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep our motor and it's going to sit on top. And then very simply our pack just goes on the side. So you can see that there, I'm going to have my pack sellotaped or glued onto the side and I'm going to have my motor sellotaped or blue tacked on the top. So again, it's just thinking about different materials and their properties and which one's going to work best. It needs The motor needs to be on the side so that it can, it can rotate and the counterweight can spin. If I had it in the middle, that wouldn't work, so it would just be bumping against the cup. So it needs to be off to the side so it's got space to spin. So maybe a big pile of blue tack is going to be best for this and maybe some sellotape best for the side there. So that's a little investigation the children can do as well, if you wish, or you can simply uh, tell them that these are the resources you have and this is how you're going to construct it. So there's different options there, depending on the learning that you're doing with the children. Is this an investigation? Or actually is the learning going to be about how the bot works and moves? So I'm going to go and put mine together and then we'll have a look at the finished example. Okay, so you can see I've finished the construction of my bot. Now I've decided I'm going to use my good old friend sellotape. I sellotaped the pack on the side. I had to do a bit of problem solving actually because the motor was, was too small for the depth of the cup lid. So I had to put a rubber underneath it to give it a bit more height so the counterweight could rotate freely. 
And I also was a little bit stuck at one point because when I first put the battery pack on, because there was no weight here of the motor, it was tipping over. So that might be something for your children to think about as well. When they first put the battery pack on the side, because there's no weight opposite it, it's going to fall over. So that's another little investigation for the children. So here we go. We've constructed our doodle bot. We've got our simple circuit going to the counter, but it's going to turn the counterweight back around. We've attached it to our cup. We've got our legs the same height. Now, if you were doing this in class, this might be the point where you want to decorate your doodle bot to make it look very attractive or alternatively maybe you want to test it first before you put all your decorations on some interesting questions there for the children what we're going to do now is we're going to test it so we're going to take off the uh, lids for the pens oh, they're all quite hard <laughs> there we are and we're going to put that on our paper and we're going to see the doodle that it makes so we'll turn it on Okay, now obviously the children are going to want to let this go for longer. A nice way that I've seen this done is putting the paper inside a cardboard box that you would get from Tesco's, one of the vegetable ones, and it just creates a nice feint on the perimeter to let the doodle bot move around. You can see the colours I've chosen, you can see very well the reds and the yellows, and I've got a lime green there as well. It creates a lovely interesting pattern. What we can see from the children is if we were to change the length of the legs, how would that change the type of journey that the doodle bot goes on? Another interesting link that you can do with the children is actually this art is very close to the art that Jackson Pollock did, the painter. So you can have a little bit of a look at the art of Jackson Pollock, the art of your doodle bot, maybe have a gallery to compare them. So there we go. That is the first Angus bot that we can make. It is a doodle bot with a simple circuit on top our legs of the same length, and there we go.